Hello YouTube, my name is Paul. Hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back to another pi uh, not pick up video, Paul. Not a pick up video, a collection video. This time it's the turn of the Atari ST, the first 16 bit micro that I bought back in the day. Um, with my hard, hard, hard earned pennies whilst working over at a garden centre kind of place. It was a bit smaller than the garden centre, but I saved up the whole summer to buy this machine. Um, yeah, I had the choice of either the Commodore Amiga or the Atari ST. But yeah, I opted for the ST in the end. In some ways, not a bad thing, because the ST had similar traits to the Sinclair Spectrum, which was the machine I had previously. You had the AY chip set, uh, so the music was quite similar. Even though the ST did pump out a few sample sounds here and there, and some of the music may have been made for its MIDI ports, so I'm not really 100% sure. Uh, you had the same issues with scrolling, had quite juddery scrolling at times. It wasn't programmed properly. Um, sprite detection was always an issue with the of the ST because obviously you didn't have any dedicated chips to throw sprites around like you did on the Amiga. So yeah, that's quite a similar similar traits to the Spectrum, which kind of made me feel a bit at home with some of it. To be fair, sometimes you got a game that was quite disappointing. Sometimes you got a game that was amazing. And whilst waiting for my ST, I, I picked up three ST games. Now one of them was Vigilante, as you can imagine, that was a disappointing conversion by Emerald Software on the ST, very juddery, um, based on a, a fantastic arcade game. Then I got Robocop, I was disappointed by that because um, it just didn't play and sound as good as the Spectrum version, so I was quite disappointed by that, even though it had more in common with the arcade. I do believe the guy who wrote uh, Robocop on the ST wrote the whole game by himself, so he had the music, sample speech was even his own voice. So yeah, for me it just didn't, yeah, it wasn't as good as the Spectrum version. I was really disappointed by that one. And then I got New Zealand Story, which you can probably see in the background there, playing on my STFM. One of my favourite platform games on that system, to be fair. Um, but yeah, so my STFM is what I had for about 16, 17 months before selling it and getting a Sega Mega Drive. Even though I did toy with the idea of getting an STE. Um... Even an Amstrad CPC Plus crossed my mind. Sam Coupe, all those lovely, wonderful machines we had at the back end of 1990, really. So yeah, so I've got quite a few games to go through. Nothing astronomical on the ST. The ST is mostly around nostalgia. I like picking up titles that came out on the ST and not on the Amiga. Um, some of the games I would have picked up like that would have been games I've played back on the Spectrum. So yeah, very nostalgic feel to the ST. Uh, systems wise I have the STFM, I have an STM and I have a ST, Mega STE. The three systems in the collection. I will leave a card up for my previous collection video. Uh, just so, if you're interested, you can just see what's happened over the last five years really. But nothing astronomical. I think the collection's probably gone up by about a third. Certainly no more than 50% over that time. So what I'm gonna do is do the video in two parts, it will be a jump cut whilst I put the dual case games away to pick up the box games, but it's certainly hopefully will be into one contained into one video. But it might be quite a long one. So first up we'll go with the um, clam case games. So I've got a few of those. You don't get many clam case games on the Atari ST. So I'll go through a few with you first. I've got quite a few US gold titles. First up we got a non-US Gold game, and that is Pac-Land. Absolutely love this game on a Sinclair Spectrum. Although it's in monochrome uh, yellow and black, I think it was. I wanted to play it on the ST because it looks more like the arcade, doesn't it? Now, the arcade game is great fun. Certainly a great addition to the Pac-Man franchise. Um, next up we've got Bubble Bobble. Probably one of the finest platform games you'll ever play on any system. Uh, quite a simple mechanic behind it really, single screened uh, platform affair, but again, it's brilliant. Played, a lot of these games are played on the, on the Spectrum, just wanted to see what they're like on the ST. Um, in some cases they're better, in some cases they're not. Well, the first three games I'm going to show you are all games that got released on the Amiga. Some of these games will be just on the ST in terms of 16-bit releases. Um, then we've got Vixen. I believe this game was called something different in Germany because Vixen means something completely different, but it does in the UK. 
this game is desirable in the fact that people like to perv over the ex glamour girl, ex page three model. Comes with a poster, um, which is what does make this game more desirable, I believe. But yeah, quite a raunchy cover. Crap game, though, it really is. Sideways scrolling affair. Didn't like it at all. Then we got a couple of US gold games. In fact, we've got six US gold games. First up is Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I believe this is an ST exclusive. When I say that, I do mean exclusive on the 16-bit home computers. Um, again, I remember this on the Spectrum. Can't get very far in it. In fact, I don't really like it, to be fair. But yeah, not sure if that got an Amiga release. I'm pretty sure it didn't. If you guys got any fond memories of these games, please leave comments below. Sidearms. I'd like this on the Amiga. I'm quite happy with the ST version, to be fair. I don't think there's too much of a difference. I didn't realise this was part of a wider franchise, uh, which includes Forgotten Worlds. So yeah, quite a lot of similarities and looks. You just don't have that nice 360 degree rotating gun. Now, a lot of these old games like this, the instructions are generally on the back of the inlay. Uh, especially these US gold ones. Then we got this little series here. I do like this little series. I think I've got all of them. So the first up is Rolling Thunder. A lovely clam case. Nice bit of colour coding on it for whatever reason. I think they look great. Sort of sat on the shelf. C64 has loads of uh, clam cases like this. Uh, Rolling Thunder, again, I remember it predominantly through uh, reviews. Never really played it back in the day. I think what ruined it for me, playing the 8-bit and 16-bit versions today, is the fact I really enjoy playing Rolling Thunder 2 on a Sega Mega Drive. A difficult one to find nonetheless. Then I've got a game here that unfortunately doesn't work, and that is Solomon's Key. So I am looking out for a working copy of this. Just a disc will do. Nice little puzzly platformer. Again, not spent a lot of time on this one, and this one, I believe, again, was just on the ST. Don't see it very often. Then we have Roadrunner. Again, I don't believe it's got an Amiga release, but I had this back in the day on the Sinclair Spectrum. And what grabbed me with the Spectrum version was his lovely screenshots taken from the arcade. The arcade game looked great, didn't it? Frustratingly hard, but yeah, I was disappointed to see it on the Spectrum, to be fair. I was a bit naive back in the day. I didn't really know what the Spectrum games looked like when I was younger. So yeah, I was usually quite disappointed by the time I got them. Never mind, next up is Gauntlet, again ST exclusive. Uh, good conversion, just found it a little bit slow. Again, nice one to have. It's quite a difficult one to find. Like I said, what I like about the appeal to these is the lovely colours and the spine. A C64 library like this is quite large. There's loads of games that came out like that on floppy disk. Any excuse to collect, isn't it, really? A couple of anomalies. So one is a game I haven't got a case for. In fact, I haven't got the instructions for this one. This me saying the instru instructions reside on the inlay. They don't always. Captain America. On the Go label. US Gold. Again, not really sure what it's about, to be fair. Uh, I think I used the case for that for something more desirable. And this is quite a recent addition. It's Thrust by Silverbird. I would like to find as many Atari ST games like this that came out on the 2600 and the arcade but got Atari releases on the Atari. And I'm pretty sure most of them, again, are, are exclusive to the ST. Games like uh, ah, Robotron. I've got an ST release. Cuba and, and games like that, games that I got on the 2600, I'd love to pick them up on the ST, but they're very hard to find. Last but not least on the clam is my most recent addition, still to feature in a pickup video, and that is Barbarian, the Ultimate Warrior. Now this was quite reasonably priced, but unfortunately it is incomplete. It does miss the poster of Maria Whitaker. Got to be fair, I was a bit of a fanboy of a Maria Whitaker. Um, yeah, incomplete, just missing the poster. The instructions are on the inlay. Nice to have that. The Amiga version is brutally hard to find. I certainly would like it on the Amiga. But yeah, it's not a bad game. I mean, some people love that game, not something I played back in the day. 
Right, over to the plastic cases then. We got ourselves Xevious. Again, just on the ST. Um, a nice slow pace shooter. I quite like it, to be fair. None of this bullet hell nonsense. You can't make any sense of nowadays. But yeah, quite a slow, quite a slow game. Should come with a badge and should come with a poster. Which I've got in the Spectrum version, but not on the ST. Now, where my friend picked up his Atari ST, he had a nice pack that he got from Silico, which is where I got mine from as well. But because I haggled them down on price, because they were quite happy to price match, but when they price match, they literally didn't give you any software besides the most essential discs that you needed. But my friend got loads of games like this one, Space Harrier, Hellfire Attack, and games like that. They weren't the best games in the world, but they were nice to have. I've been looking for this one for years. I think I've had it a couple of years now, but this game is Rana Rama. The game got a release, I believe, under the Action 16 label. The full price copy, I think this was quite expensive. It's at least 50 quid from what I remember. Might have been slightly more. It's a good little game. Never really played it, to be fair. It's got a hell of a nostalgic tune, though. But yeah, bloody hell. It's supposed to be a good game by Houston. But yeah, that's it for the plastic cases. Let's go on to the jewel cases. Now, first of all, I'm going to show you some Gremlin. Now, Gremlin was a bit random because some games came out on both systems, Amiga and ST, and some games didn't. So, I'll show you the ones that did come out on both first. First up, we've got Techno Cop. Uh, a good game. I like this one again on the Spectrum. Driving, shooting, a bit like Chase HQ. Got to the. Uh, yeah, kind of platforming levels at the end of each drive to apprehend the baddie, which I always found quite difficult, to be fair. Sorry about that. I just had the postman deliver some games to me. How, uh... How rude. Right, what have we got next? So, we got Deflector. Uh, again, a, a good game to... F well, it's actually a very good puzzle game. I'm not very good at it, to be fair. Um, comes out like this, which is the re-release label. Had the same issue on the Amiga. Distributed by Prism Leisure. And you got the release of this game, which didn't have that on the back. But again, quite a hard one to find. Yeah. Uh, and then we got a very difficult to game to find, and that is Mickey Mouse. The computer game. Now this is unfortunately incomplete, but I will get hold of a cheaper 8-bit version just to put the instructions in here. I do believe they share the same instructions. Uh, not really keen on this one, to be fair. Graphically, it's quite pretty. But yeah, I'm not really, not 100% sure what to do, to be fair. But yeah, quite a difficult one to find as well. As is the next two. Now, these are ST exclusives, if you like. First up is North Star. I'm not sure if it's based on a comic, based on a TV series, I don't know. Um, don't have a lot of... Uh, Nostalgia for North Star. The game itself is quite good. Bit of a platformer, bit of a running gun, I suppose. I suppose in the old days it'd be called walking guns. They weren't particularly fast games, were they, back then? I'm really pleased to have that. As, well, the same as the next one, really, and that is Trailblazer. Yeah. Cracking, uh, cracking game on the Commodore 60 and Commodore 64. The ST version. There's something about it's not quite as good as those old 8-bit C64 versions. But yeah, it's one of those games you're going along kind of a grid with different squares that do different things depending on what colour they are. Could reverse your controls, could make a little ball jump. Um, speed the ball up, slow the ball down. Bit of a puzzler, really. It's a good game. I love this on the C16. My friend Sam, when he had the C16, I did play that quite a bit. Then we got a US Gold compilation called The World's Greatest by Epix. Again, never knew that Super Cycle got a release on the, on the ST. Championship Wrestling and Winter Games. Now, I'm not sure if Winter Games got an Amiga release. I think it did. Whereas the other two, as far as I'm aware, didn't. Had supercars back in the day on a Sinclair Spectrum. Supercars, Super Cycle. I certainly did have, I certainly did have supercars on the ZX Spectrum. Uh, next up is a game called Sapiens, uh, a French game. Now, this game here, I would only ever load up to listen to the music. 
because like I said, I grew up with the Spectrum, AY chip and all that, but this one had some sampled music. Not quite sure how they made music on the ST, but it had that kind of hissing background, so yeah, it's a bit of a sample tune really, of quite low quality. Uh, the game itself, I believe, is some form of RPG, although I've never played it. There's no instructions with this, but it doesn't really matter. I don't think I'll ever play the game anyway, but yeah, nostalgically, uh, it's because of the music. Now this one, called Blimey Governor. Um, yeah, I mean, I used to see this in well, in magazines like Ace and maybe CMBG back in the day, reviewing this. Quite a sultry film from what I remember. I think I was quite young when I saw this film. And that is Emmanuel. Um, yeah, this is the UK release of it. It's in a small plastic case. The Continental release got a larger box. Unfortunately, the box I got from France was rather uh, worn out. One thing you do not want is a worn out box. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a... I'm not sure it's a point and click adventure. I don't think it is. It's certainly a graphic adventure of some description, but I can't remember how you play it, I've got to say. I literally loaded it up and it was so slow, it put me off playing the game. But yeah, lovely to have it in the collection. Quite a desirable one for obvious reasons. Can be quite expensive. I think that was about £70. Now, generally, ST games to pick up to collect for aren't overly expensive. Unless you go into France and you pick up some of those exotic titles that probably were released just in France. I've seen a, a game in France sell for a thousand euros before, so clearly an expensive game. But yeah, most games that were released over here, I can't think of any that are overly expensive. Right, a couple more US Gold dual case games. The first one, now these were both in CVG magazine. The first magazine I bought from them, June or July 1989. Um, so as soon as I knew I was getting my ST, CVG became my mainstay magazine. Whereas before that was Sinclair User, and I think they're from the same stable, maybe EMAP. Now both these games featured in that particular magazine. I, I, I have tended to try and pick up as many games from that particular magazine because it's one of the most nostalgic magazines that I remember. Now the first one is a game called Squeak. Now, I did read somewhere they withdrew, withdrew this game from sale. There's also a swear word at the end of each level or a swear word at some point in the game. It's a very peculiar one to find. So yeah, a bit more detail would be great if you guys know, but yeah, it was withdrawn from sale for some reason. It could be this version, or it could even be the French version, which is in a bigger box. There's also a game called Super Squeak, which I don't believe got a US Gold release. There's a puzzling game, puzzler game. I think you're just moving around blocks, changing the colour of them. Whilst picking up power-ups and stuff like that. I don't really know much about it, to be fair. But yeah. That's a nice one to have. I don't believe that got an Amiga release. If it did, I don't think I've ever seen it. Now, the next one in the same magazine is called Chicago 30s. It took me a while to find this game. It's quite a difficult Spanish... I'm not sure if it was Topo Soft who released this. In Spain. Yeah, it's a bloody hard game, though. From the screenshots in the magazines, it really appealed to me. Being kind of a mob game. Um... But yeah, the game itself, I think once you get used to it, it's okay. It's just very hard to get into. But again, a very difficult one to find. So there's those two. Next up, we have Advanced Ski Simulator. I don't know why I bought this. I did have this back in the day on the Sinclair Spectrum. Bloody hard. My Codemasters. I have very few Codemasters games on the SD, actually. Very few. This one's an absolute classic. Probably, again, the finest fighting game on the system. The thing with the Amiga and ST, they didn't get many sideways scrolling beat-em-ups, which was a shame. The ones they did get were generally quite poor. But this one is so iconic, and the SD version is brilliant. That's IK+. Plus. Such a brilliant game, this. I love this game. Epic musical score goes on for a while, but yeah, the, the animations... The moves, it's just a great laugh, especially with two players, with a friend, it's, it's, a, it's a blast. Now one of the games my mate had back in the day was this one, which is quite similar in some ways to uh, Afterburner. That's Hellfire Attack. Not a desirable one, no one seems to want this game. It's okay. You can probably pick this one up for less than a fiver. 
yeah, I just remember it again. Like I said, this my, my old mate Sam had this. Yeah, not bad, not a bad little game. Uh, Super Sprint. Again, not my cup of tea. Great game, great conversion. If it's your uh, your thing. Once you get used to the controls now, it is good fun. But yeah, I, I always struggle with those sorts of controls. Let me go over to some Ocean Software. Now, some of these games again got ST releases and not on the Amiga. One of these games took me absolutely ages to find on the Amiga and cost me an arm and a bloody leg. Um, which is the first one I'm going to show you. That's Army Moves. Don't see this one very often. Again, a Spanish game, dynamic game. Uh, brutally hard. When you first look at it, you thought, oh, it looks a bit like Silkworm, doesn't it? But it's nothing like Silkworm at all. I can't remember if you just have a tank or a jeep. I'm not sure if it's like Silkworm where you've got a helicopter and a jeep, or you just got a jeep. I can't remember. But yeah, lovely to have it because it is a brutal game to find, but yeah, it's not fun. The next four are Imagine Ocean exclusives again on the ST. First up, we got Slap Fight, uh, which again is a very good shoot em up. Slow paced, a bit like Xevious. Uh, fortunately, I can't get this to work, I don't think. I tried this on an unexpanded FM and I couldn't get it to, to load, which is weird because when I bought it, it worked, so I don't know what's going on there. Then we got Taipan. It's got an 8 bit home computer release, but not an Amiga release. And I didn't realise it was based on a book. Yeah, again, never played it. Quite a slow paced game from what I've seen. And we have Arkanoid. Again, ST. Not Amiga. Again, not bat and ball games aren't really my thing, but again, nice to have it. But this game I loved. I love this game. I think I first played it on the ST and not the Spectrum. Uh, made by the same guys who brought us a great escape, and that is where time stood still. Again, quite a desirable one, this one. It's originally done by Denton Designs. Uh, incidentally, you can play this on the Amiga, um, where it's reverse engineered from the ST version. It's pretty cool, actually. Right, we've got a US Gold game called The Deep. Uh, again, not a very inspiring title. I can't remember if you're a submarine, shooting ships, or your ship depth charging submarines. I can't remember. It, it was not a great game, but it's also an arcade conversion, which I didn't know that. Licensed by Cream Corp. Hmm. I wonder if Cream Corp done Emmanuel as well. Enduro Racer, classic game, classic racing game on the Spectrum. The SD version, from what I remember, is not bad. I haven't played it as much as I played it on the Spectrum, but yeah, it's not a bad conversion. Again, ST, not Amiga. Uh, then we have another one, which is Nightmare. Great program, never watched it a lot. Um, but I did remember sitting down every now and then and watching it, but yeah, it's, it's a really good program. I wasn't really into sort of like Dungeons and Dragons and that sort of stuff as a kid. I never really got the opportunity to play them, to be fair, but I can imagine if you was into that sort of thing, you probably would like Nightmare. Quite a puzzly game, very hard. Very hard. It's like the one where the kids had to go around blindfolded and they were told what to do by their mates or by their team. Iconic title tune there. Uh, the real Ghostbusters, now this one did get an Amiga release. It's okay. I wouldn't say it's any better than okay. Get an arcade conversion. Didn't find that out until later life. Sticking with the arcades, we've got Elite Systems, we've got Paperboy. I've played this version before. In fact, I don't even think I played the Amiga version. I used to like the Spectrum version. But yeah, again, cheap and cheerful that is. As is the next one, which is Bomb Jack. Now, my friend had Bomb Jack. I used to be good at this game back in the day. I can't get off level one now. Good conversion on the ST. Great fun. As is the next one, which is not a conversion. But it is in a sense, but it's not an arcade conversion. I think the game was originally written on uh, Apple II. I think. That is Nebulous. I always assumed that Houston created that. But yeah, it's a really good game. It's hard um, to go up the tower, aren't you? And your lifts and avoiding the baddies and avoiding the drops. And sometimes you get a bloody platform disappear beneath your feet. That's a bit of a pain in the ass. 
We've got a game called Realm of the Trolls. Again, this came out in the Amiga. Very difficult to find. Again, US Gold. Um, I'm not sure where the game originated from. Yeah, if you've got that on the Amiga, it's a very tough one to find. Next one's a classic. Um, I still need another copy of this because my copy only has one disc. Uh, I didn't think to check that when I bought it. I'm pretty sure the Amiga version only has one disc. That's probably how I compared it. But in fact, the ST version has two. That's Human Killing Machine, which is kind of US Gold's unofficial sequel of Street Fighter, uh, which they also released. Very similar game engine. Uh, both very poor, to be fair. Ah, another Gremlin game. First one came out on the Amiga, second one didn't, and that is Gary Lineker's Hot Shot is the first one. Had this on the Spectrum, top-down footy game, kind of in the mould of something like Micro Pro Soccer, but nowhere near as good. Then we've got Gary Lineker's Super Skills, never played this one. I uh, don't think I had this one on the Spectrum back in the day, but I did have Soccer Superstar? Superstar Soccer? I don't know what it's called. But yeah. I think this one might be just a bit more arcadey. I, I don't really know, to be fair. Then we've got another Elite game. In fact, another three or four Elite games. Three. First up is Overlander. Another kind of Road Blasters clone. Great music. Not a bad game. You can upgrade your car in this one, though. And then we have... Classic game, need a new case for this one, I think mine's a bit knackered. That is Space Harrier. Now I have seen somewhere there's an additional box with additional levels. Um, but I can't remember if I saw that on the ST or the Amiga or both. I don't have that unfortunately. But I love this game back in the day. The first game I ever played using just the mouse. And to be fair, it's very intu intuitive control method with the mouse. It's very good. Dogs of War. Classic uh, top-down commando clone. Didn't play this back in the day. Certainly one that I've played since collecting. It's very good. Sometimes it scrolls vertically. Sometimes it's horizontal. But yeah, it's, it's a really good game. Quite desirable. Again, especially on the Amiga. There's an encore re-release of that, which I do have on the Amiga, but not. Unfortunately, I don't have the full price version on the Amiga. I bought the budget version of this game because that's how I had it back in the day. Um really look forward to playing this on the 16 bits and I was bitterly disappointed. The Kicks version of Outrun. At least the ST version doesn't have that horrendous intro of the Amiga. But like the Amiga version, it takes an age to load. Final three dual case games. All part of the same series. So a trilogy. You must know what this is. Star Wars. Again, I was curious to see how this would play on an ST. Bear in mind, the ST has a faster processor than the Amiga and can handle sort of 3D and vector style graphics better because of that faster processor. Empire Strikes Back, very similar to the previous game in how it looks, just has uh, different elements from the second film. Or is that now the fifth film? I get confused. And Return of the Jedi. Which again, I didn't realise this was an arcade conversion as well. Uh, not a very good game. It took, uh, well, took a different route. Away from the vector graphics and more kind of arcade sprite-based game, really. But yeah. All right. If you excuse the jump cut as I go and get my box games. Right, I'm back with the box games. Um, there will be another jump cut to get the last of the box games, but... Got to mention, if there's games on the Amiga that I'm after and I find them on the ST first, I will pick them up and then probably later sell the ST versions on. So there are games I've had before that I no longer have because of that, really. Um, yeah, start off with some of the box games then. <coughs> A lot of what I had back in the day tended to be in this form, really. So I, I didn't get my ST until sort of like the autumn of '89, and by that point, the box games were quite well, quite popular. So one of the few games I didn't get that was a box game back in the day was Vigilante. And like I said, Vigilante is one of those games that I picked up around the time I got my ST. As you take these around my mate Sam, 
and play on his computer. So the game in the background there, New Zealand Story, uh, this one, and Robocop, like I said, I bought before I actually got my ST. Now, Vigilante, I love this game in the arcade, but the ST version, even though I tried to like it, it was just quite slow and quite sluggish. Um, I played it to death nonetheless because I love the arcade game, but yeah. Not bad. The Amiga version is more playable, it's smoother on the Amiga. Uh, therefore, more enjoyable. Now, next up is a rather peculiar title um, released by Microprose. Now, this was the first time a WWF game was licensed, I believe. Came out in America first, got re released over here by Microprose. There's an Amiga version. But I've never seen it in this form, which is in a little wallet case. A lot of digitised graphics in this. It's kind of a strange drop-down menu. You just take, you just pick an option, and it plays out in front of you. Not in the sprites and stuff like that. It just plays out like some kind of footage from the real thing, really. So yeah, digitised game. I didn't like it to be fair, but it's got some historical value. Being uh, bearing in mind, it's the earliest WWF game. Right, next up we got a game called Fighter Bomber. I uh, remember this being published in the magazines back in the day. It looked really good. I quite liked Flight Sims back then, uh, but one I never got around to playing. I recently picked it up on the Amiga, um, but again I probably will keep the ST version because it's probably a little bit faster. Another classic I had back in the day, this is in quite tatty condition, that's Pac-Mania. But there are times I have this on the Amiga first, then get it on the ST second, and then I'll sell the Amiga version on. So yeah, a bit scruffy looking box. I think uh, Thunderbirds came out in a box like this, wasn't it? Just one look at it and it dissolves. Good game though, very good arcade conversion, very good take on uh, Pac-Man. Now this game, I remember my friend bringing around loads of games. Don't ask where he got them from, but it bring around the original discs only towards the end of me having my ST. There's quite a few games like that, and this is certainly one of them. This is Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Now when he brought it around, I was half expecting the arcade conversion from the, yeah, from the fighting, you know what I mean. Yeah, Turtles the arcade game. Now, I was disappointed by this, and later found out it was a release of a Nintendo game. But inside the box, you've got some stickers, some transfers, I think, a postcard. So it came with some decent bits. Not that my friend had those bits in his pocket, but he certainly had the original disc. Again, nostalgia driven more than anything else. It's not a game I would play. Now this game I would have played back in the day, like so many, off of a magazine cover disc. That is Time Machine. Can't get the hang of this. It's quite a tough old game. Bit of a puzzler. The first level you see yourself throwing boulders into holes. Don't know why, don't know what the point of that even is, but yeah. It's alright, but yeah, it's more again more nostalgia. And I think it was quite cheap and cheerful for that game. Now this game has to be the best game I ever played of its type ever. I couldn't even get I couldn't even get used to um sensible soccer when I bought it on the Amiga back in '92. Just couldn't get used to it. But this game on the other hand kickoff 2 I played this game a hell of a lot during the summer of 1990 it's great because it coincided with the World Cup at the time it coincided with the fact I left school but I love this game the Amiga version yeah it looks better um, and probably plays a bit better maybe because it looks better maybe it's a bit smoother I don't know but playing it now is quite hard though it's quite a challenge it's quite a challenging game to master again I used to play with my friend, we used to play non-stop, we didn't really have a, a league of computer players, but we play it amongst ourselves, and yeah, it's brilliant, brilliant game. Uh, another one I played very late on was Nine Lives, um, a tough platformer, brilliant music, um, but the game graphics are very nice as well, it's just a very difficult game to play. You had the ability to jump literally across the entire screen if you held down I think there's a down direction long enough. It just the bar goes up. You let go at the top, literally your cat will go across the entire screen. It got it was very difficult to kind of judge where to jump. Then we've got another. This is a really underrated game. I love this game. A puzzler. 
quite eerie music. Archipelagos. Um, yeah, you just got to try and stop this virus or whatever it is infecting the entire island by doing certain things. I can't remember exactly what to do now, so I found it quite difficult to play again. But at the time I played it, I'm pretty sure again it was another demo, but I was hooked on it. Again, cheap and cheerful game, but you'll get hours of enjoyment out of that, if that's your thing. Um, it's the only system I actually have the first and second game on, to be fair, and that is Barbarian 2. This was nice and cheap, that's why I picked it up. It cost me about 10 quid. Nice condition. Some say the sequel is not as good as the original. Personally, like I said before, I'm not really keen on either of them, to be, to be honest. Uh, but I do believe this comes complete with its poster. Lovely jubbly. Um, but yeah, uh, never really played it, to be fair. Then we have a classic game my mate had. Good old Sam, he had this game. Very competent shooter. Let's cross out. It's got a different sort of sound to it than the Amiga. Looks slightly different. The Amiga version was brilliant though, wasn't it? This is the version I played back in the day. Very good. Another strange puzzler. Now, I don't believe I bought this game. I think I may have got it as a freebie on Stampede Disc Magazine. Do you remember that? Stampede. Stampede Power. Yeah, wicked. Very similar to Archipelagos in some ways. Which you've got to stop a virus taking over. I don't know if you can see the screenshots there. To go from the old sunny happy face to this ugly little bastard there. But yeah, you have to do certain things. Again, can't remember what you had to do. But I remember it having really good, again, eerie music like Archipelagos. But yeah, I really like that. Even better because it was free. Next up is Mr. Heli. I do have this on the Amiga and the ST. I haven't decided what to do with the ST version. I have a feeling the ST version plays better. It looks like a straight port over. There was a reason why I've kept hold of this. In fact, it plays really well on the 8 bits. I'm going to shoot him up. A uh, game I've never really played. But I remember it being reviewed and got highly reviewed from what I remember, and that's Future Wars. Uh, first point and click I ever played um, was Operation Stealth. Very similar uh, mechanic to that. Yes, yeah, highly regarded, but never never played it. This game I picked up, I think, because it was cheap. But I do remember the graphics in CVG Magazine, the Porsche and the Ferrari looked flipping amazing, didn't they? And that is the Jewel Test Drive 2. I believe it's kind of a 3D driving game. Or is it? I don't know. Played for about five or ten minutes. But yeah, again, cheap and cheerful. This game, again, my friend had back in the day. Um, it looked great. Great sound. But God, was it hard. I think I completed the first part of the game about two years ago, but the second part of the game I couldn't get to grips with. That is After the War. These Spanish publishers, or Spanish... This is a Spanish published game, actually. Quite brutally hard. A few of these games like that. Uh, next one being Narco Police. Again, don't have this on the Amiga. Uh, when you get a hang of this game, it's actually very good. It just takes a little while to get a hang of it. Yep. Yeah. And then this one I really enjoyed. Again, I don't have this on the Amiga, and that is Astro Marine Corps. Did come out on the Amiga. It looks and sounds better than the ST version. Graphically, it's really good actually on the Amiga. Don't have a comparison really between the Amiga and ST, but there's an Amiga shot in the back. Yeah, it doesn't look like that on the ST, unfortunately. But yeah, very good game, very desirable game. Nice bit of run and gun action. Another one of those games that when you look at the advert, you think, wow, it looks brilliant. And then you play it. And this one's quite a weird one, so I think you've got to play using a mouse. I couldn't get to grips with it, and that is Crazy Cars 2. Again, one of those games I always wanted, never got. In some ways, I dodged that bullet. Dodged a few bullets back in the day, luckily. Now, this game I really did like. Uh, reminded me a little bit of, say, I don't know. In terms of looks, it reminded me a little bit of Trailblazer. Had a bit of an element of, like, I don't know, Space Harrier, but at the same time, there's nothing like them. That's Eliminator. 
by Hewson. I uh, really enjoyed this game. Uh, one of those games that you forget about as you get older. It's not one of those games that stick out in your mind, but I'm really glad I got it back in the collection. But yeah, it's a really good game, that is. Another classic. Um, I think it's an empty box. I do have this up on the shelf, I think, complete. But I'll show it to you anyway, and that's Strider. Played this game on the Mega Drive. Absolutely love the Mega Drive version. These versions, unfortunately, aren't that great. Um, they're okay, just nothing like the Mega Drive version. Another very late game that I played, again on a demo disc, and that is Loops. A very difficult puzzler. The timer goes down rapidly on this one. A bit like something like, I don't know, Pipe Mania. You literally have to build loops with the pots. It's alright, I just found it hard. Harder than what I remembered it to be. A sequel to a Specky classic. A well, Specky classic to me, that's ATF2. Even got the same tune as the Spectrum version. Sounds quite good. A very good flight, it's kind of a flight sim, more of an arcadey flight sim, but I, I was really impressed with it the Spectrum. It's just an upgraded version of that, really. Same sort of perspective. Yeah, it's good fun. It is right. Again, cheap and cheerful. Now, I still need to get the original of this game. I do have the terrain editor, and that is SimCity. There is an architect one as well, which I think has got like a green front. I'm not sure if there's any others. Very difficult to get add on pack. Especially the one I just said, the green one. And then a very late game again that I played on the demo discs, and that is Saint Dragon. Again, a very competent shooter. A bit more juddery on the ST than it is on the Amiga, but still a good shooter nonetheless on that system. And we've got some of those longer boxes games. Now, these long box games I kind of missed out on, because like I said, when I got the ST, those games I just showed you the kind of new box style that came out. But before that, probably about 1988 into 89, you got these long boxes. Now this is another one of those games I always looked at in the magazines and really wanted to get because I had the Spectrum version. I saw the ST graphics and I was like, oh bloody hell, got to have that. Football Manager 2. Didn't play this on the ST, did have it on the Specky. But I had a dual case on the Spectrum and it's a lovely box on the ST, colour graphics. To be fair, the graphics are very similar on both machines except for the actual bit you play the football on, or watch the football. The stadiums look pretty cool. To be fair, it's not too dissimilar. You play it now, I probably would have been a little bit disappointed back in the day if I played that. Great advertising though. This is a good game, a game I found whilst collecting the Hit Squad games. That is SDI. Now the odds are even. Lovely condition that is. A um, bit of a play on, say, um, Missile Command really. Very good, very good game. Again, I like that on the Amiga though. Another game I had back on the Specky. In fact, this is not even an ST version, just put that one away. Another game I had on the Specky, because a lot of these I had on the Specky as well, is Thunderblade. Um, an ambitious uh, port, I've got to say. Don't think I've ever really played it on the Atari ST. However, this one I did, and this one I had on the Spectrum first, but the ST version is where I think it, where it began. Very competent shoot em up, and that is Xenon. Okay, very completed the condition of that. Cracking David Whitaker soundtrack. A bit of speech on this one, that blew my mind a little bit compared to the Spectrum version. But yeah, it's a very good shoot em up. Some would consider that better than its sequel, Mega Blast. Some of these I picked up because they're reasonably priced. These are Capcom long box games. The first up is Tiger Road, which is one of the last ones I found on the Amiga. Um, again, I'm not sure I'll keep this or not. I was going to collect them all because you have got the addition of one game that didn't get a long box Amiga release. Then I found that I, I sold 1943s, so I picked it up on the Amiga. So I'm no longer going to do that now. So yeah, Tiger Road, maybe one I, I might sell along with LED Storm quite a competent little racing game. It's quite hard though. And then the one I need to keep because it's how it came out on the ST and that is Street Fighter. The Amiga version got a little dual, square dual case rather than this lovely big box. But maybe, like 1943 had the ST 
even on the Amiga version it said Atari ST, but maybe there's a big box version of, of that on the Amiga. Uh, this one here I've picked up because I do want this on the Amiga. Uh, I think there's four in the series on the Amiga. I think there's five. Is there five on the ST? Maybe there's not. Yeah, I think on the Amiga there's part three, four, five and six, but the ST I think is two, three. I'm not sure how far it went beyond. Obviously four, yeah, of course. Ultima four? I don't think there was five or six on the ST. Might be, let me know if there, there is. But yeah, I would like this on the Amiga. Then we got probably the first flight sim I ever played, and that is Falcon. A very competent flight sim. Again, ran a bit slow, so it'd be interesting to see this works on the STE in 16 megahertz mode. I do have a sneaky feeling this is not compatible though. Yeah, I love this game. I played this game a hell of a lot. Yeah, the only thing I found with it is slow, but I, I really liked it. Again, the only way you can find this game um, in a long box format is on the ST, and that's Rambo 3. I think it went straight to budget on the Amiga. As I was saying earlier, I think the ST was more dominant in the UK. Sort of in, especially in the mid, mid 80s up to about, I don't know, 89. Until the impending release of the Batman pack. Super Hang On, had this back in the day on the ST. Uh, I prefer this to the Amiga version. For some reason, I think it plays better. Nice sample rendition of the arcade tune at the beginning. But yeah, I can actually play that version with joystick. The others I find quite difficult. Next up, we've got Gauntlet 2. This one plays rather well. Plays better than Gauntlet, the first Gauntlet game on the ST. And I believe the ST version played better than the Amiga version. Pretty hence why I sold the Amiga version. Right, let's go and get some more games, so I'll be back in a moment. Right, that's it. This is the final stack of games now. Like I said, I don't want to make this into an overly long video, but it seems to be going that way. First up is the 16-bit version of Double Dragon. Actually, it's not that bad. Some people absolutely hate this, don't they? I thought it was okay. It's a very easy game to complete. Uh, I enjoyed the Spectrum one back in the day, even though it looked horrendous. And then I played the arcade one after I played all these, and I wasn't overly that impressed. Because I remember it being a game that all the kids talked about in school, Double Dragon. Do you know what I mean? But I never actually ever got the chance back in the day to play it in the arcade. But yeah, I remember getting this on the Spectrum. I was a bit disappointed because the graphics were pig ugly, but it played okay. And the SD version, the rendition of the uh, arcade track again. Uh, which was sampled, and I thought it wasn't too bad on the ST. Now, the next game is a probably one of the best racing games on the ST, in fact, and that is Vroom, a frantically fast racing game. Uh, there is an add-on pack to this, which is what rather difficult to find. But yeah, no, this is tough, tough game. I don't actually have that on the Amiga. If I have the Amiga version, I'll probably again stick with the ST one. So I'm not, yeah, some games just play better on the ST. Including this one, which is Damocles. Now, I played this game for a lot of hours. Planetary exploring. It's not really like that. There's a lot of places to explore. Lots of buildings. Um, and then, subsequently, they released a couple of mission discs, which I think on the mission disc, it just had coordinates or places to go to pick up items to get you further in the game. Which kind of bulked out the rest of the game, really, because there's lots of empty spaces, there's lots of places you go and there's nothing to do. There's things you might pick up and have no idea what to do with it, which all made sense when the mission packs came out. Yeah, one of the first games I remember there being add-on bits and bobs for it. I think this year, this year 1990, might have been one of the earliest times we started to get add-on packs. Obviously in physical form. Um... Not my most favourite football team in the world, Manchester United. But this game, when it came out, though, was a, a sea change in football management game. This is one of the earlier games that I remember, where it had a lot of presentation to it. I remember this game as well being more superior to the ST... Uh, this is the ST version, the Amiga version being more superior in looks. So by about 1990, you started to see the Amiga being programmed in a more suitable way. But yeah, this was okay. I bought this back in the day. I just found it a bit cumbersome. 
But presentation wise, it looked bloody awesome. This game, I think I've said this before, the first game I ever spent 12 hours on straight. Brilliant game. Slow nowadays by today's standards, but bloody hell was this game brilliant. Populous. Yes, I love this game. Like many others. Yeah, brilliant game. This one again I remember from a magazine demo disc, but I also remember the music sounding a bit like She Drives Me Crazy by Fine Young Cannibals. That is Interphase. Um, developed by the Assembly, are they called the Assembly? Something Assembly. There's some kind of association with them and the Bitmap Brothers, wouldn't there? But I don't really know what that association is. I think they may have worked on both games. What are they called? The Assembly? It might just be called the Assembly Line. Yeah, I never really played it. I just remember it mostly just for the, the beat from the Fine Young Cannibals. Now this game I loved, uh, Ninja Warriors. A fantastic conversion on the under 16 bits, especially. Yeah, great, great use of sampled sound. The uh, music on the Amiga is phenomenal. Um, yeah, really good game. I found it just a bit difficult. But yeah, I remember that. My old man used to moan when he used to hear all the digital eyes effects at full volume. I'm gonna turn a bloody game down. But yeah, no, it's brilliant, brilliant game. That's one of the best arcade conversions I've ever played. Even though the game itself isn't amazing, it's certainly a great conversion. Now, I remember having this back in the day, but I can't remember how I had it. I don't think it was in the original box form. That is Darius Plus. Uh, a, a highly collectible game. Don't see it very often. It's not a great conversion of the arcade. Everything is just a little bit too big. The ship is massive. Uh, but in the level Guardians, though, they're just humongous, aren't they? But yeah, no, brilliant. It's not a brilliant game, but it's brilliant that's in the collections. It can be quite costly. As can this one. Now this I'd like on the Amiga. Quite a late release of this, by that point, old arcade game. That's Ghosts and Goblins. Again, very desirable on the Amiga. You're looking at three figures for that quite easily. The ST1 is a million miles behind. I think I picked this up relatively cheap back in the day. Back in the day, whilst I've been collecting. Good game though, it's a good game. I do believe the Amiga version doesn't play as well from what I remember. I think the ST version plays better. So probably another Atari ST port to the Amiga then. Now this game, again, man, it's got some great music. It's a very good, kind of puzzly game. That is rock and roll. You are literally a ball. You use the mouse to control it, avoiding uh, any hazard hazardous parts of the level, like falling down holes. Um, yeah, I think it's the first game I ever remember playing where it had a band playing the music. Remember old Chuck Rock? This may have been the first one to do that. Would recommend it though. If you like puzzly games, it's a very good game. Now this one is a kind of a shoot 'em up, but in 3D form. Uh, again, a very late game for me. Uh, one of the first games I remember seeing STE compatible on it. That is Simulcra. This game is fantastic. Now, if you're, you're like me and you do like games from Graph Gold, they did make some amazing titles, didn't they? I said in my previous video, funny enough, Rainbow Islands is Graph Gold. Not man, they did they produce some really good stuff. It is like a shoot 'em up, but in 3D, really. Got power ups and all kinds of stuff. But yeah, might not be your cup of tea, but I thought it was brilliant. Now we're going to something a bit more pleasing to the eye. Now this is still sealed. Um, I do have this on the Amstrad, and I have played this on emulation. Not really great game, but the fact it's still sealed, and it's one of those items that is rather hard to find. I left it as it is, really. That's game over two. I don't believe this has the first game over, because the game over one was not released on the Atari ST. Not sure if it's ever got an Amiga release, though. Yeah, lovely collectible item to have. Now this game I was looking forward to, um, because it had a similar perspective to say Kickoff 2, I thought this game might be quite good, but it wasn't quite good at all. Very great, uh, great presentation, very similar to the likes of um, Manchester United. Presentation wise it was great, but the game itself was found wanting, Jeff. Italy 1990. 
Again, I remember buying this one, brand new. Uh, it was delayed a little bit, from what I remember. Uh, but finally getting it, getting home. I played it, I completed it. Got lots of bump inside it, like spot the ball competition posters and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, I I really look forward to, pl to playing this game, but it's very short-lived. It doesn't really last long. You, you lose interest quite quickly. Unlike this one. Now this one, again, I had back in the day, completed it, admittedly using about three or four credits because it's friggin' hard. That's Crackdown. This, I prefer this to the Amiga version. Brilliant game, though. This is one game I'd go back to and play. Um, but yeah, I played it to completion. Brilliant music. It's just a great fun game. Never played it in two player, though. From that to a game I chucked at the wall in frustration. I took the discs out of my ST, lobbed them at the wall, two deep regrets, and the disc shattered all over the bedroom. Turbo Outrun. Again, it looks great, it sounds great, and then it moves, or I should say, it attempts to move. It's so juddery, really bad sprite detection, frustrating as hell, even on the Amiga it's like that. Uh, it's such a shame. If that game moves with a bit more vigour, a bit more smoother as well, uh, it would have been a fantastic game, but yeah, unfortunately not. I've already shown you a box of Strider. Another frustrating game. Luckily I didn't take the disc out and throw this one at the wall, and that is Ghouls and Ghosts. Highly nostalgic. Tim Follin tune. Jeff Follin tune. Probably Tim Follin, I don't know. Brilliant music though. Absolutely fantastic chip tune. Yeah. Tough as nails though, can get to level two, it's about as far as I can get. Now into plastic case territory. Plastic cases that are designed in such a way it'll quite easily damage your inlays, unfortunately. Now this first one, I didn't own this back in the day, but the magazine I bought when I bought before I bought my STC and VG had this on the front cover. The graphics look great because by that point I was so looking forward to playing on the 16-bit computer. Every time I saw a 16-bit review, I was interested. Every time I saw a 16-bit game, it looked brilliant in the stills. License to Kill. I've got it as a freebie, I think again may have been with Stampede magazine. Um, but the game I probably come to appreciate it more later in life. It's a good it's a good little game. Loads of different sub-levels. But for the first time I got off the first level, it changes a little bit, you become James Bond. But when you're shooting baddies, you've got to use your scope, and it's quite weird to get used to. Once you get used to it, it's alright. Yeah, graphics at the back there. I mean, bear in mind on a Spectrum, looking at that. Don't look that much now, but back then, bloody hell. Loading screen's awesome. And then we have the first game of that type that I ever bought from the shop, APB. Again, in that same magazine, I think. Same magazine. I love games in that perspective. I just, I don't know why. I don't know what it is. I just do. Um, but this game suffers horrendously with sprite detection and therefore makes it bloody hard. You can ram into a cart 100 miles an hour and just bounce off of it, or you can just touch it at 1 miles an hour and explode. Frustrating as hell. But even so, I loved it. Yeah, brilliant game. Well, it's not a brilliant game, it's rubbish really, but I like it, I just really like it. This one here again is tough. Played this one recently in an arcade and really enjoyed the arcade over this home micro version which I found again to be brutally hard. That's two bin. Again got this again with Stampede magazine. They gave away quite a few full price games during the course of 1990 but again I remember that more from that freebie than I do from the game itself. And this was another one I bought in the plastic case. I only bought the two back in the day and that is hard driving. I actually quite enjoyed this. Again, be interesting to see if this works on the STE, 16 megahertz. Um, but what I like about this game is when you complete the courses, you can race against yourself, like a phantom car, um, which made the game really interesting. To be fair, yeah, it's good. It is good. It plays okay. It does play okay. It plays better than the 8-bit versions for definite. Cool. So that's that stack. Got one more stack to show you, which is predominantly. Ocean software. Now I did have a lot of Ocean games on my ST because predominantly the games they release, release were the games I really look forward to them bringing out. Before, before we get to that though, I did pick up this Stampede Mega Box. 
I will do a video at some point with like just going through magazines. I keep meaning to do it, but yeah, this was a very novel idea where they released the magazine on disc. You did get like about I don't know like a pamphlet with it, but it always had this really cool music at the beginning. Yeah, it all came just like that. Stampede. Don't know how many issues there were. I think the Amiga one was originally called Rampage, and they may have changed it to Stampede as well. I've got to say, yeah, I've got all of the magazines loose, I believe with the discs. Makes no sense, I've got all the magazines, yeah. Right, first up on the Ocean Label, a game again I played on demo, and that is Plotting. Very good puzzler. That and Puznik, I played this one though, but not Puznik on my ST back in the day. Cheap and cheerful that. This was the first game I ever bought on my ST back in the day, that is Robocop. This was delayed on the ST and Amiga, I don't think it came out until about June time. My friend already had his ST, just got it for his birthday. This got released a couple of weeks later. Like I said, disappointed with it. It's not a bad game, don't get me wrong, but it, it, I was expecting a quantum leap above the Spectrum version. What we got instead was more a game more akin to the arcade in looks. But literally the guy programmed it by himself, which is no mean feat, don't get me wrong, but that may have hindered it, I don't know. The music was very much taken from the film, but nothing like the Spectrum. The game was easy, easier than the Spectrum version. The speech was Robert, is it Robert Johnson? I forget his name now. Not Robert, I don't think. I don't know, can't remember his name. Surname Johnson anyway, but he used his own voice for the speech. Anyway, that's Robocop. Then we had this one again, demo game, late on, 1990, Ivanhoe. Ocean France, brutally hard game, looks great. Got great presentation. I remember seeing that big sword going across the screen, silky smooth scrolling, blown away by that. Um, the game itself, yeah, I don't like it. Pretty game, great music, but bloody hell, is it, uh, is it hard? Uh, another classic game then from Ocean. Bought this in the summer of 1990, Midnight Resistance. Um, again, a great looking game. Flip screen now, the Amiga had nice scrolling uh, games by this point. ST unfortunately had the old flip screen going on. I liked it nonetheless. I like this game. I did complete it back in the day. Uh, I completed this one back in the day, but I had to cheat because it's bloody hard. Operation Thunderbolt. I do believe the guy that wrote this uh, moved on to uh, write games like Assassin on the Amiga. Is his name John Brandwood? Something like that. Yeah. Great conversion though. It really is. It graphically is great. Uh, everything about it is just brilliant. I think it's one of the better conversions that Ocean brought out back in 89, to be fair. I remember this one being delayed on the ST for some reason. And that is Rainbow Islands. For me, the finest platformer to ever grace the Atari ST. Absolutely brilliant game. I love the New Zealand story, but this certainly betters that. It's just a more playable game. Uh, I think I might have got that sometime around January 1990. Yeah, it was delayed by quite a bit, as was this one, funny enough, and that's F29 Retaliator. The ST version had some bugs. I think I've said before, you can hit a mountainside sort of five or 600 meters away from it. I know it's reviewed less favorably on the ST because of these bugs it had. But again, it was delayed, which is a shame, but I loved it nonetheless. It was more of an arcade flight sim, as opposed to, say, Falcon. This game I completed recently, multi-part film time called The Untouchables. Um, the Amiga version is bloody hard. I thought this was hard, but the Amiga version takes the piss. Very well presented. The Amiga version looks like it's been drawn from the ground up, so you do get a different experience looks-wise. They play very similar, though, in most aspects. But yeah, a good game. A tough game, but I do enjoy it. Uh, Chase HQ 2. Uh, Criminal, special criminal investigations. Um, okay, probably slightly better than the original game on the ST. A bit lackluster, I think, wasn't it, the first game? Which I did buy back in the day on its release, and I was disappointed. Because the screenshots that you'll see on the back here are a combination of arcade. The one in the middle looks like a work in progress screenshot, because that's not how the game looked on the Atari ST or Amiga. Yeah. So I'm not sure what, what happened there. These guys brought us a Continental Circus, which was a very good arcade conversion, I thought. But Chase, Chase HQ just felt like there was bits missing. It felt like it was rushed. 
And when you complete the game on the ST, there's no end screen. It literally just like... The music stops, but so stops on a certain note and holds that note. It's really annoying. Put your name in and that's it. PC Amiga version has got an ending, even though it's even harder to play. Uh, another great conversion with Shadow Warriors, very similar to, say, Midnight Resistance. It has flip screen scrolling. But nonetheless, it looks and sounds fantastic on the ST. Plays similar on the Amiga, just plays a little bit more difficult, but does look and sound even better still. Now, I remember getting this game in the post. Couldn't wait to play this. I played the Spectrum version, I think it was released before the film. Uh, the ST and Amiga versions were delayed, but bloody hell, was I really looking forward to this. Now I turned it on. I had the same problem as Robocop. The music was horrendous compared to the Spectrum version. The game blew the Spectrum one away, in my view. I had the same music, but for some reason it was of a poor quality. Gone was the atmospheric title music and the place of a very bland rendition of it. But one thing this does has that the Amiga doesn't have, it has nice intermit intermittent screens. Where does he get those wonderful toys? And it has a picture of the Batwing, whatever it is. I never danced with the devil by the pale moonlight and stuff like that. It had nice little quotes from the film, but had lovely graphics to go with it. The Amiga didn't have that, but yeah. It was disappointing in some regards, but at the same time, those driving sequences were amazing. Absolutely superb. Um, another game that I was late to the party to. Uh, didn't play this really. My mate brought a disc around. I played it on disc. Um, I found it quite brutally hard. In fact, I prefer this to the Amiga version. Even though the Amiga version looks and sounds better, I preferred the SD version. Batman the Cake Crusader. Awesome graphics. Uh, I just found it very hard. Uh, arcade Adventure, but yeah, the graphically fantastic. It really is. I only bought this because I wanted the box for the Amiga version. I wanted the back of the box. The back of the box there is a little bit damaged, but I kept it anyway. Total Recall. Game, I think this came out in about 1991, so I missed the boat with that. Don't know much about it at all, to be fair. Another groundbreaking game. Was it the first game to have commercially licensed music? I think it might have been. Certainly the first one I ever experienced. And I'll tell you what, the graphics, bloody hell. Xenon 2 Mega Blast. Some people don't like it, some people do. I don't... I, I wonder who likes it. I like it predominantly through nostalgia, the weapon system. There's crazy amounts of weapons on that bloody craft, isn't there? And later on you get those big thick laser beams. Uh, but yeah, I, I like it. I like the game. I know some people don't. But I like it. That I got that and Batman the movie around the similar sort of time, so I blew my little mind. Whereas this game, my god. Now that was disappointing to say the least. It was so bad I took it back to the shop. After about 15 minutes of gameplay. Looks great. The still screenshots look fantastic, don't they? Yeah, really bad. Two frames per second, one frame per second on Benz. Uh, three left. Snoopy. I kept this one because my Amiga version doesn't have quite as nice a box as that. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work either, which is a shame. I've got two get bloody discs as well. I picked up another disc to go in the box with the original disc, and neither of them work. Shame, really. Supercars, a game I think I picked up when I started collecting again. So when I bought an ST back in 94 from Silica and Tottenham Court Road, I picked this up as part of a compilation. I was blown away by this. Didn't play this back in the day, but what a great game. What a great game. However, this one blew my socks off when my mate brought it around. Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge. This was the racing game that I had been waiting for up until that point. What a phenomenal game. I prefer this to number two and to number three, even though they're better presented. This game, the impact it had was far greater than the other two put together, to be fair. Brilliant game. Absolutely fantastic. That's it. It's taken a little bit longer than I thought it might take. Um, but yeah, I'm not really after a lot more ST games unless they are exclusive to the ST. And I discovered the other day, I do not have Continental Circus. I always thought I had that game, so that's probably the only outstanding nostalgia game that I want. 
That's it. So the ST won't really grow much more, but it has certainly grown since the last video I put out five years ago. So yeah, if you've got any fond memories of any of those games, please leave a comment below. But apart from that, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much for subscribing. I'll see you guys again real soon. Take care and bye for now.